Summary of an Enemy of the People by Henrik Ibsen The play starts in the evening in a small Norwegian town, where friends and neighbors come to see Dr. Thomas Stockman and his wife, Catherine. Billing and Hofstad, the editors of the liberal daily The People's Messenger, are already there eating when Peter Stockman, Dr. Stockman's brother and the town's mayor, shows up. Peter is a traditionalist who turns down Catherine's offer of food. Instead, he pulls his brother away for a serious talk about the town's new bathing complex, which they both helped build and which is expected to give the town's economy a much-needed boost. Peter Stockman criticizes his brother for being free-thinking and sometimes impulsive on the baths committee, but Dr. Stockman brushes off his comments by saying that they are both working for the good of the community. As the mayor goes, Captain Horster, a sailor who just got back from his last trip, comes over to the doctor's house to share a pipe. Everyone is talking until Dr. Stockman's adult daughter, Petra, comes home from her job as a teacher with a letter for her father. When Dr. Stockman reads the letter, he gets very upset because it includes the results of a private investigation he did into the quality of the new baths. He found that they are full of poisonous bacteria from nearby tanneries, which makes them dangerous for people to use. Dr. Stockman sends the report right away to his brother and tells him that he will make the results public and try to get the baths fixed. Hofstad and Billing tell him how great it is that he saved the town from disaster and say that he will be known as a hero. Catherine and Dr. Stockman talk the next morning about Peter's short note in answer to the report. Catherine tells him to be nice to Peter and that the baths committee might not like Dr. Stockman's findings and idea of expensive repairs. He tells her that the mayor is just jealous that he didn't make the big discovery first. Morton Keel, Catherine's father, stops by to ask Dr. Stockman about his results after hearing about them around town. But because he doesn't understand or believe in bacteria, he thinks that his son-in-law is pulling a big joke on him and laughs at him. Hofstad comes next. He asks Dr. Stockman for permission to write about his results in The People's Messenger. He says that the problems with the baths are a sign of how corrupt the conservative authorities are and that putting them to light will show people the truth. Dr. Stockman is surprised by the idea of attacking the authorities, but just then Mr. Slaxon, the head of the Householders Association and publisher of the newspaper, comes to congratulate Dr. Stockman on his finding. He tells him that most people in the town will back him and even think of him as a hero. Dr. Stockman is happy and excited about this public attention, but he won't agree to print anything until he talks to his brother. Soon after, Peter Stockman arrives. He tells Dr. Stockman that he shouldn't have done his study on his own without the committee's permission, and he says that he doesn't believe what he found. Also, fixing up the baths right now would be terrible for the town's income. The only thing they can do is make small repairs over time. He also criticizes his brother's independence, saying that as a member of the baths committee, he doesn't have the right to his own thoughts. Peter wants Dr. Stockman to say in public that his investigations were a waste of time, but Dr. Stockman refuses and quickly says that he will print his findings in the People's Messenger. After Peter walks out, Catherine tries to calm him down. She tells him that if he sticks to his ideas, he could get fired, and she reminds him that he has to work to support his family. Billing and Hofstad are editing the article that Dr. Stockman has written at the People's Messenger. They are excited that this news might make more people support the Liberal Party. Mr. Slaxon, who puts moderation above all else, tells them to keep their report to the baths so they don't upset the authorities by going further away. Both Hofstad and Billing say that he is too shy. Soon after, Petra arrives. Hofstad has asked her to translate an English novel for the newspaper, but when she reads the book and sees how moralistic it is, she refuses because it goes against her beliefs and the beliefs of the newspaper. Hofstad tries to make her feel better by telling her that such sentimental stories are needed to get people to read the newspaper's more radical articles. Petra is angry at what she sees as a trick and worries that a paper with such loose morals won't back her father. After Petra goes, Peter Stockman arrives. He talks to Hofstad and Billing about their choice to publish the article. He says that the people of the town will have to pay more taxes to pay for any repairs to the baths, 
and that if the baths close, the town's finances will be ruined. Mr. Aslaxon and the reporters are shocked, and they decide right away not to back a finding that will be so unpopular. Just as Peter is giving them an alternative statement to publish, Dr. Stockman comes to check on the status of his article. He doesn't notice the other men's obvious unease, and it's not until Catherine comes and accuses the newspaperman of using her husband that Peter's presence is revealed and the doctor realizes he's been betrayed. He gets angry with the guys and says that he won't be quieted because he's telling the truth. In the meantime, Catherine promises to stand by him, even if it hurts the safety of her family. Dr. Stockman calls a meeting of the public at the home of Captain Horster. A group of noisy citizens shows up. They have already chosen to support Peter Stockman because the People's Messenger and Mr. Aslaxon are on his side. Dr. Stockman wants to talk to the crowd, but Mr. Aslaxon says that the crowd should first choose a leader. He is easily chosen as the leader of the Homeowners Association, and he and Peter Stockman lead the crowd in voting on moves to stop Dr. Stockman from speaking. Billing and Hofstad, who are in the crowd, shout their support. They say bad things about Dr. Stockman and say they are no longer friends with him. Dr. Stockman, who is very angry, yells over the other men and says that the real thing he's learned in the last few days is that most people don't deserve to be in government because they don't know how to run it. He says that most men are like dogs and that only a few are smart enough to lead others and make decisions. He says that a society should find these smart men, whether they come from the top or lower classes, and give them power. The crowd is insulted and angry. Led by Peter and Mr. Aslaxon, they vote to call Dr. Stockman an enemy of the people, and the whole Stockman family has to leave the hall while they are teased and jeered at. Dr. Stockman and Catherine wake up to find that all of their windows were broken during the night. They get a letter from the owner telling them to leave because the public has such a bad opinion of them. Petra gets fired from her job for the same reason and gets home soon after. Even Captain Horster's spot on the next sea trip has been taken away because he hosted the meeting. Soon, Morton Keel shows up and tells Dr. Stockman that he bought shares in the bath stocks with all the money he had planned to leave to Catherine and his grandkids. If Dr. Stockman keeps up his campaign, the shares won't be worth anything, but if he goes back on what he found, they will make the whole family rich. Morton owns one of the tanneries that polluted the water, and he is so worried about his business's image that he tries to blackmail his son-in-law into saving it. Dr. Stockman is for a moment tempted, but he turns down the offer in the end. As he leaves, Mr. Aslaxon, Billing, and Hofstad arrive. They have heard about Morton's actions and think that the whole finding was a plan to let the Stockmans buy stock in the baths at a low price. They think that Dr. Stockman is now rich, so they offer to fix his image in the newspaper in exchange for money. Dr. Stockman realizes that the newspaper is crooked and only out for itself, so he kicks the men out of the house. The family doesn't know where to live or what to do, but Captain Horster, the only person in town who helps them, offers them his house. Dr. Stockman says he will find young children and open a school to teach them according to his own ideas about how society should work. He also wants to raise great young men who will change the world. Petra promises to help. As the last act comes to a close, Dr. Stockman calls his wife and children to him and says, the strongest man in the world is the one who stands alone. About the author. Henry Gibson was born in 1828 to a family of wealthy traders. Until he was seven, when his father's business failed, he had a good life. Ibsen had to drop out of school, so he became a chemist. He then moved to Christiania, now Oslo, tried to get into the university but failed, and decided to write his first play. Ibsen's first plays didn't get much attention, but working at a theater as a director and manager helped him learn how to write plays. At age 30, Ibsen married Susanna Thorison. Soon after, they had a son, Sigurd, who later became Norway's prime minister. Frustrated with their financial situation, the family moved to Italy, where Ibsen wrote Brand and Pier Gint, two of his most famous plays. The family finally moved to Dresden, Germany, where Ibsen wrote his most famous play, A Doll's House, a harsh critique of how women are treated in marriage. 
Ibsen came back to Norway as a controversial but admired playwright 27 years after he left. In 1906, he died in Christiania. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.